Alrighty, let's start with some basics. There's the zoom. Um, you can use whatever kind of string you want, but um, I like to kind of use these transparent fish lines for the straight bars that I'm going to put up here running across. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to use some S long for the actual weaving. All right, so just any S long is fine. Um, you know, I've got like a multi pack here, and I bought this off of Amazon. So there you go, it's like a see, S long. That's a whole mix of colors, which I like. Very nice. Made by Beadsmith. All right, some other things to consider is what kind of needle you want to use. So um, I pulled a couple examples. So this is just a really thick um, needle that, I mean, it looks like a sewing needle really, and it actually came with the kit um, that came with this loom. So um, I don't like this guy. What I like to use is right here. Oh, hold on, so tiny. Urgh. Come here, okay. This is a unique needle, this is really cool. So I know you can't see it right now, but watch this. Look at that. It's got a big old fat large, you know, eye in there. Makes it really easy for, for threading. And they make them huge. They make them like super, super long, like like five times as long as, you know, so that you can get all the way across this. But um, for my purposes, I'm just gonna do a small little guy. All right, um, and before you get started, you're gonna wanna think about how you wanna end your bracelet. I love doing these cute little, you know, bars at the end and um see i've got a bracelet somewhere around here that's finished oh yeah right here this is how i prefer to do my endings but i mean there are so many different ways to do an ending and one of the more traditional ways of doing an ending is to actually on this side is to do like a weave a weaving pattern to start and then there's lots of really cool like leather straps that you can squeeze on there and glue. Um, people were giving me great advice about how to do those. And um, this is just how I started learning. So, you know, I, I definitely want to say that I'm not an expert. Um, I'm just now beginning to learn. So, you know, take this video with a grain of salt, please. And then um, handy dandy GS Hypo Cement can help you in a lot of different ways. So, and then don't forget your side clippers. They really do help a lot too, okay. All right, so now that I'm done talking about equipment, let's talk about loading this sucker up. So um, what I like to do is I like to take this wire, or you know, this uh, fishing line, and what I'll do is I'll get six, six strands, and um, the way that you load it, is you tie a knot and you bring that knot around one side and then you bring the knot around to the other side right here. And then once you get those knots locked or you know, basically behind one of these pegs right here, you just kind of loosen this up and you pull, 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 pull and you tighten, tighten, tighten until you get them nice and straight through the middle. So um, I'm gonna pause this video and set mine up and um, yeah, I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I've got six strands and I just put, you know, a nice double knot there. I'm gonna separate three to one side, three to the other side. And I just set it on the top right there. And basically what you're, gonna, what you're gonna wanna do is just for now, I found the best way to do this is just start by putting, you know, three on one side, three on the other side, because as you turn like this, you see how that knot like slips back and forth. What you need to do is to stretch this all the way back, you know, as straight as you can to this guy. And so what I'd like to do is get another knot going. And it might be helpful to make a double knot, you know, so it doesn't slide around because I'm using fishing wire just because I love the durability of fishing wire. But hey man, lots of people like to use um, Eslon for the sides and you know some people do leather um you know for the for the back part it's just whatever you prefer really all right anyway uh let me get this nice and straight try to keep that 
that knot, you know, kind of steady right there and just bring it back over here. And now that it's nice and kind of set, you can tighten this up a bit, okay, just a little bit. Don't go crazy yet because what you have to do is you have to kind of line these up. So I'm going to do the best I can here. You guys should see what I'm doing right here. I got like a camera in front of my face <laughs> and I'm trying to get these all straight. Go me. All right, let's see. Trying to get one into each little slot there. There we go. Woohoo. Can't believe I did that on camera. All right. And then at this point, you want to just kind of separate them, you know, draw your fingers down here, make sure they're about as straight as you can get, you know. See how, oops, I just screwed that up. Hold on. Okay, one into each slot. Lined up in a row. Okay, now let's take a look. One in each slot, coming down, one in each slot. Now you're gonna wanna roll this tight. You see how I didn't tighten it too, too much? Roll it nice and tight now. And then, you know, tighten that up. Get up here, oops, get up to the top. Do the same thing, tight, tight, tight. Okay, nice. All right, and now you're ready to start Lumen. All right, so everyone is a little picky about the type of beads that they like to use. Um, I did mention that these are my practice beads because like I said, I am still a novice and I can't believe I'm making a video. So, you know, whatevs. All right, so these have, if you look real close, some of them are slightly different sizes. Some of them are actually fused together um, and some of them are broken even. So let me, let me just kind of show you, let's see if I can find a couple good examples. Yeah, that might be a good example right there. So the bead on the right is a little bit thicker than the bead on the left. I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create kind of like an uneven looming process. So if I put these two side by side, you know, the looming process might be a little, might look a little off, you know, a little wonky. So great for practice though, great for practice. But once you start getting serious about your looming, you're gonna wanna invest into some really good beads. So I'm sure most of you guys know these, all right? Check glass beads. Um, this size, and there's so many different sizes that you can choose, but I like these because, you know, you can see them really well. You can see the holes and everything. So this is eight knot, right? Eight slash zero seed beads. Um, of course you can get like really tiny beads if you want. And in fact, I've actually got some of these. Let's see. Um... these there's like 11 knot and they're like really really tiny so let's see if i can grab a few oh yeah here we go here we go eedy beedy little guys but i mean when you're first learning you're not gonna want to <laughs> you're not gonna want to work with these tiny little guys so you know take your time and um one of the best things that i love about doing the loom is that you can start this project walk away and come back and you'll know exactly where you left off. That's what I love about looming. So you know how like some of you guys were saying, I don't have time for looming, but this is one of those projects that you can pick up and start again at any time. So I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so here's my s -Lon. And um, since I'm just showing a demonstration, I'm not gonna use like all of my s -Lon, but I don't know, maybe about like an arm, I do about two arms length and you can always add more, um, you know, as needed. 
but like I said, I'm gonna show you kind of the traditional way of getting started. All right, my favorite needle. This thing is so cool. Big old fat hole. Stick it. There we go. And pull a generous amount. Here we go. All right. So let's see if we can show you how to get started here without getting you too lost, okay? So like I mentioned, a lot of people, what they like to do is to weave a piece in the front so that they can attach it to leather or, you know, different types of um, clamps. And there are so many beautiful clamps out there, decorative clamps. They basically are like this, you know, claw that basically clamps onto the end of it and it has um, loops and stuff. Um, let me show you what I mean. Yeah, so here you go. Um, these are decorative clamps. Okay, I'm getting one out. There you go. So one of the clamps would go to one side, the other one would go to the other side. And basically what this would do is create an adjustable closure so that people would be able to, um, you know, adjust to whatever length they want. Ugh, come on, get off. There we go. And um, see? And so basically you would just want your loom to be as thick as that, as that piece. And then basically you would clamp down, put some glue, you know, GS Hypo in there, and then clamp it down on the ends. So totally a great option. Um, anyway, so to get started with that weaving process, make sure this is in good view. Kind of zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, I think I need to go under the first and then over the second. Oop, sorry. Go under the first, over the second, under, over. Ah! <laughs> this is so hard to do when I'm like not really close to the image. Hold on. There we go. Okay. And then that will end on an up at the end. I think that's the way you want to do it. But anyway, you're going to get all the way to the end and you're going to have all this rope left over and you're like, should I tie this on or anything? Answer is no. Why don't you leave a nice, healthy, you know, piece at the end. Um, and then you'll be thankful that you did because if you need more weaving at the end, you can always add, you know, at the end you could stick your needle back on and weave on more if you needed it. All right. So I ended with the s -lon up at the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under that last one and weave it back. Up, down, up, down, up. And I am ending on an up. Okay. And then at this point, you can grab a toothpick or maybe just like a little pin or something like that and just kind of squeeze these together. There you go. And you've basically started a little weaving pattern. And you can make this as long or as short as you want. You know, if you're working with a clamp like this, you kind of want to think about how wide this clamp is. And so how much weaving you need to do in order to make that fit. All right. So weave on. All right. So I got a little bit of weaving done at the top. And so now it is time to add my beads. Now, the way that it should end is you should have that s on the top of this last strand right here. So if you accidentally ended with the string on the bottom, you must have missed some weaving going on in here. So again, the string is on the top at the very end. And I like to work from the left side to the right side. Someone was telling me that instead of, you know, working from the top down, they work from the bottom up. So you know what, everyone's got a different technique and that's totally fine. Um, this is just how I saw someone doing it. And um, you know, I learned from watching people a lot. And um, so this is just what I, what I saw. All right, but anyway, now it's time to add beads. Each spot in between these lines is a place where you can place a bead. So I did six of these, you know, fishing lines, which means I have enough spots for five beads. So I'm going to load five beads in. Okay. And you know, you can have fun with patterns or whatever. And in fact, actually I got a good idea. 
One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take these under the work. All right, pull your string up. And this is my absolute favorite part. Place one of those beads, like use your, your fingers on the bottom to push those beads up in between the, the line. Okay, push up, 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 up. Make sure they're all popping up, 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 up. Because the aim of the game is now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this thread and you're gonna go back through these beads and you wanna make sure that your needle is now technically on top of these strands. All right, because basically what you did when you pushed up from the bottom is you put the string on the bottom. Well, now you're putting the string around on the top and that's gonna secure those beads in place. All right, so I'm gonna pull these through. And voila, isn't that fun? And from here, you just have fun. You can like make your own patterns, do whatever you want. I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna do like a border, I think. Here, I'll show you what I mean. One, two, three. Let's see, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do a blue border. All right, check it out. So underneath the work, okay, push up with your fingers on the bottom, push, push, push. Make sure they're pushed all the way through. And bada bing, bada boom, weaving it back through. And now you just kind of want to make sure that they're all kind of, you know, up and, uh, you know, pushed up against the, the previous line. And uh, you just do that all the way down. It is so much fun. And this is what I meant when like you could totally walk away from this and, you know, come back to it later and you'll know exactly where you left off. Some people, what they do is they use like graphing paper to create like a pattern um, so that they have like a plan of what their entire bracelet's gonna look like. I've seen some beautiful work where people put like arrows and diamonds and some really creative people. They put like actual words and stuff. I could see a lot of people really enjoying that. All right, Oop. oops, oops, oops. All right, so. I think you get the basic idea here. Super fun, love bead weaving. So um, I hope this helped and I kind of slowed it down a little bit. And then basically at the end, the best part is, you know, you've got a knot right here and you've got a knot on the bottom. Finish at the bottom of the end with another weaving pattern like this. And when you are done, you can literally lift the whole work off. You don't have to worry, nothing's gonna fall out you can just lift the whole work up and out. All of this weaving that you did at the front prevents the line from, you know, coming back out. And in order to secure this, you know, to make sure that none of the weaving falls out and none of your beads fall out, that's why you need some of that GS Hypo cement, okay? You can put a little dab right here along, along the surface or whatever, and once you get that clamp on, man, you're set. It's not gonna come off at all. So, all right. Anyway, hope that helped everyone. Yay!